Hello again, it's Lock Noob, and this is a just a little short bonus video really on this what is in the UK a, a public holiday, what we call a bank holiday. Uh, it's Easter Monday here, and it's a four day weekend for most people. A good weekend for doing lots of kind of like little uh, bits of DIY around the house and doing little projects and I did a bit of both really. I fixed a sink in my house and I also had time to make my own custom partial tang pick, which is here. This uh, wood, which if I just show you in the light, you might be able to just see how um, it, the patterning here has, has some real sort of depth to it. And this is a lace wood. It's actually London plain. It's a soft wood. So um, it never takes sort of the, the shine that a hard wood or a closer grained wood would. Wood wood? Wood wood. Um, Oh no, that, that just reminds me of uh, a really terrible joke about Edward Woodward, the actor, which is, why does Edward Woodward have four Ds in his name? Otherwise he'd be known as Iwa Weewa. Sorry. Anyway, I digress. Um, uh, I, I, I've got some custom picks made by some of the world's most renowned pick makers, uh, Tepene, Daz Evers, and Rev Tattoo. And I just wanted to have a go myself. I've sort of ground picks myself and this actually um excuse my uh, finger marks on here it's sort of mirror polished uh 301 um, max yield so this is a think which is made um from the sparrows diy uh picks i also have a stock of um square cut 301 max yield um but because I'd had limited time over the weekend, I, I thought that I'd just use um, these and thin down the shank height myself, just so that I could reduce the amount of time on the grinding wheel, uh, taking down uh, the metal to make a, a pick tip. But then I just free handed a, a steep rise short hook to my specification. I, I use short hooks for the most part because, um, well, I guess I pick a lot of European style keyways, which are quite thin. so. Uh, so, you know, high, sort of a steep rise and a, a short profile with a thin shank is uh, sort of perfect. Uh, this was the steel itself. Um, obviously, needs to be punched through so it can be pinned with some three mil brass. And that I this was a, a tip from Tepene actually, um, who I'm sure you all know. He recommended a tool like this, which is a, uh, a heavy duty hole punch and my goodness it is that was just the best tip in the world I've tried drilling this steel before and I've actually set fire to drill bits um, I'm not lying I actually destroyed uh, two drill bits once just drilling one hole in a piece of metal for a video um, so I really recommend if you don't have uh, a decent pillar drill uh, with a very low speed setting for this uh, extremely hard stainless then one of those hand hole punches um, is just awesome so you can sort of see how I use one of these blanks here um, to make that. That saves some time, punched the holes, lined them up on the wood, made some marks um, using some sort of punch dies and then finished it with some teak oil and about three or four layers of beeswax. And like I said, it's a, it's a relatively soft, very light wood, this uh, London plane. Um, so it doesn't take a, a, a sort of a high gloss, but it does take sort of that, that deep luster in certain lights, which is really attractive, I find. And um, you might say, why uh, what, Why have I gone for this sort of classic lozenge shape? Well, truthfully, you know, I, I probably could have gone for something a bit fancier. But with wood like this, I really just wanted to make it the star. I wanted to have a lot of surface area so you could see it. I wanted a nice um, sort of long handle, really like those in custom picks. Uh, and I wanted it to be comfortable wherever you hold it. This is so tactile, so smooth, so round. Look at the sort of lozenge profile here. It's uh, yeah, it's just so nice and tactile. And for me, this is sort of perfect. I believe I'm, I'm, this is about, it was eight mils. It's about, after all the sanding, um, it's about seven mils now. Um, and then it's all epoxied in. So, and, and that's like a really nice, um, width it's comfortable and it i find it you have less fatigue in your fingers the closer they are together when you're picking uh, as opposed to when they're further apart on slightly wider picks 
Um, of course, you know, horses for courses, depends what suits you. But yeah, this, this sort of suits me. I think if I make another one, I'll probably stick to something very similar in shape before I uh, decide to go more avant-garde with my designs uh, as I get a bit more confidence. Uh, so yeah, I really, really just want to say thank you to Tepene and Daz Evers um, for all of the advice and knowledge that they've shared. And uh, boy, did I listen. You know, when people like that uh, give you their knowledge and time, uh, you've got to listen. Uh, am I going to do a video on how to make picks like this? Well, yes, but I didn't want to do it on my first ever um, partial tang wooden handle because I could have messed up at any point. Uh, I just didn't want that stress making something which I actually wanted to use and like and uh, and and you know love. So, uh, and I think I got there. Any improvements on this? Uh, yes, just one. I think I should have sanded. I actually sanded the tip and then polished it last. If you can see just here next to the the body, um, it's polished, but it's not polished quite the same as the rest of the, the pick. So what I might do next time is actually polish the pick first, then glue it in, mask it off, and then sand down the uh, um, the the wood. And I think that that would mean that this, this looks sort of shiny from the tip of the wood all the way down. It's not a massive deal, but you know, it's it's just one thing which I would have improved. Um, and do I have anything to make picks out of? Well, yes, I actually found this set of samples for making um, pens, these are pen blanks, on eBay for around, I think, five pounds or something, ridiculously cheap. And you can see here, they've got a range of hardwoods and softwoods um, all different, all really lovely in their own right. So you beech oak, Maranti, something I'm not familiar with, maple, um, sapel or sapel, walnut, tulip, Iroco, not familiar with that one either, although it looks a bit like a dark oak actually. And then you've got ash um, here as well. So yeah, I've got plenty of material here to use. Um, I just need now some time and then I'll be able to get on and make some more of these picks but yeah I hope you hope you like that I'm really pleased with it considering it's my first ever um, wooden handle and yeah I think it worked out really really well um, you know next time I, I've got some lessons learned but you know I actually want to use this pick now and uh, yeah I hope it gives me lots of uh, years of satisfaction all right now in the comments what I'd really like to know is over this long weekend if indeed you got one and apologies if you didn't what little lock picking projects did you get up to? Let me know, it'd be really interesting. And I think other people would love to um, hear in the comments what you got up to too. Especially if you could link to uh, any YouTube videos or, or pictures of what you got up to, that would be absolutely brilliant. All right, well, I hope you had a lovely weekend. Have a great week and I'll see you all next time.